Hi, my name is J.R. Landers. I'm a Bachelor's of Fine Arts candidate with an emphasis in sculpture in the Department of Art and Design. I will be presenting my senior exhibition project of which you see now, a multimedia installation titled, Does Little Johnny Have a Boyfriend? This piece was exhibited in the spring 2021 BA BFA juried senior exhibition at the Baum Gallery located on campus. So I'm going to begin with a little bit about myself. This is me at the opening of my senior exhibition. I have for the most part always wanted to be an artist. Way back when I was in kindergarten, we had a little graduation ceremony at the end of the year. We each dressed as whatever we wanted to be whenever we grew up, and I wanted to be an artist then. And while my perception of what an artist is and looks like has expanded a lot, I am very glad that I am pursuing a career in the arts and am following my passion. Throughout grade school, I remember really enjoying the art classes I had. I remember multiple times people suggesting that I was really good and could develop a career in the arts, but I didn't want to believe them. It wasn't until high school when I had an excellent art teacher help expand my thinking and skills in the arts that I decided to pursue a career as an artist. That then led me to come to UCA and enter the art program to gain the education and training I needed to be able to have a successful career as an artist. I have grown substantially during my time at UCA, both in my field of study and in my personal life. UCA gave me a place to explore myself and my identities, and I use my artwork to help in the process. As an artist, I work with a variety of mediums, but I tend to gravitate towards ceramics. Most of my senior exhibition work is made out of clay. Conceptually, my use of clay is representative of how, as a child, my parents molded me into what they wanted. I was the clay they tried to form to their desired mold. But now as an adult, I am reforming my identity. The work that I make is driven by my experiences dealing with my identity as a gay man and the conflicts I have with my intense Southern religious upbringing. So now let's look at some of my early work that paved the way for what would become the art in my senior exhibition. This is a wall installation piece that I made for one of my classes. Here I created a gridded rainbow pattern and then made silhouette designs to fit in the grid. This piece was a reflection on important moments in my life that contribute to my understanding of my gender and sexual identity. The rainbow is representative of my gay identity and the use of a grid functions to bring some organization to the composition of the silhouette designs, as well as represents my current personal state of trying to understand my past as represented by the designs. Here are some details from that project. The individual silhouette designs were made while reflecting on my childhood and the experiences I had that contribute to my current understanding of my identities. In my senior seminar art history class, I researched and wrote a paper on the significance of the rainbow as a symbol for gay and queer identity and the importance of the symbol to the LGBTQIA culture. This paper allowed me to research in depth the history of the rainbow as a symbol, and it also created a deeper meaning of that symbol for me. It also led to my continued use of the rainbow in my future artwork which brings me to this piece. This is the really early beginnings of my senior art project. Here, I use the form of an army men toy, which is a typical toy given to a male child. It represents gender norms for men that are often imposed very early. I then formed these figurines with rainbow clay, contrasting the expected gender norms with unique rainbow patterns created by the process of press molding. Part of this piece was doing a lot of experimentation and finding the right recipe for the individual clay colors. One of the awesome parts about the ceramics program here at UCA is that we mix almost all of our materials. 
So I made my own clay and glaze, and it took a lot of testing to get the colors I wanted, but I was able to get those colors, and I now have the recipes saved for future use. In this piece, I used cross-stitch, which is often associated with femininity and typically has religious iconography. I used homoerotic imagery in contrast to the traditions of the medium as a metaphor for me not following the traditions set by my parents, but creating my own path. This piece was a bit different than my typical work, but it was a lot of fun and I intend on returning to it in the future. Now I will discuss a few of my influences to the work I made in my senior project. First, we have Lisa Liu and her piece titled Kitchen. It is a life-size kitchen that has been completely covered in tiny glass beads. I am influenced by her intense use of work and process. She makes work that takes an insane amount of time and that is important to her work. Here is a detail of a part of that piece, which is also my favorite part of the piece. I just really like how she captured the water with the various tiny blue beads she used. Medardo Rosso showed that exposing the process in the finished piece can be beneficial. He made many figurative sculptures, often busts, that showed the process he took to make the piece by not removing the flashing. This is where material escapes the area where the halves of the mold meet to create the weird edges you see around them. I really liked this effect both visually and conceptually, so I allowed this to happen in my work to create visual evidence of the clay being pressed into the mold. I was also inspired by Tony Orsler's work and his use of projections onto large forms, and this eventually led me to try projecting onto my ceramic army men figurines. And here is another one of his works. While he uses singular forms to project across, I decided to experiment with using many smaller forms grouped and patterned together to cover a large area to then project over. Now I'll discuss my senior project and the processes that I used to make it. This is the work finished and installed, and I'll start with just a brief overview of the project. I created an installation comprising of ceramic army men figurines along with an overlaid video projection. The army men figurines, resembling the typical toy given to a male child, are representative of gender norms for men. The video is representative of identity and individuality. The combination of the wall relief installation of army men with the video being projected directly on top convey how gender norms are destructive and distortive of individual identity. I'm going to show you the process of creating this piece and through that, explain more of the deeper conceptual layers. So let's start from the very beginning. This is where my project started. I had a simple idea to just paint an army man toy with the pride flag and see what happens. It was a little experiment that I tried a couple of different ways. After some discussions, I then felt that it would be stronger conceptually if the rainbow formed the army men instead of being a surface treatment. So I made rainbow clay, as I mentioned earlier, and then made rainbow army men, of which you see here. These are roughly the same size as actual army men toys. I used the typical toy model size, but I also found some that were twice as large, which I used to make the larger ones. After more discussions and research, I considered the idea of projecting the rainbow on top of the army men and how the interaction of the two elements could be more fitting of my concepts. With that in mind, and after some planning and decision making, I went on to submit my senior project proposal. I would just like to note that I submitted my proposal only days after campus got shut down for the COVID pandemic. I had to adapt my plans in some ways to accommodate the changes the pandemic brought on, but I was still able to successfully complete my work for the show. And after the proposal was approved, it became time to work. In order to make the army men, I used a press molding technique where I start by making a plaster mold of the toys in two parts, which is what you see here. Here I show the process by which I form the clay army men. I start with a mold and then I press clay tightly into both halves of the mold. I then slip and score the areas of clay that will be touching. 
This is essentially gluing the two halves together so that they don't come out in separate pieces. Then I press the two halves together and do a lot of pressing, hence the name of the technique. I give it some time to dry and get a soft leather hard, which just means that it needs to be dry and hard enough to stand and not flop over. I carefully open it up and pull them out. I then clean up the edges and put holes in the back to later put wire in for installation. Because the technique isn't perfect, there are multiple times that they come out in pieces, but I just slip them back together and keep going. I had a total of four different molds that collectively gave me 14 different styles of armament. To make a whole set of 14, it took around an hour and a half to two hours. I ended up making over 600 for this project. So you can do the math, but let's just say it took a while and required a lot of work. Part of the process is a thing called flashing, as I mentioned earlier, where clay escapes from the mold to create the edges you see around them. I have outlined the flashing here. I decided to leave it because it fit with my concepts. It is representative of how I never fit the mold designed by my parents. This flashing also creates a more interesting surface area for the projection. After the army men are made, they must dry and then be fired in a kiln twice. The first time to prepare for glaze application, and then the second time to actually make the glaze and vitrify the clay. Here I am loading only a small portion of them into a kiln. There is a whole science to kiln firing and even loading kilns. For now, I put them in, fire the kiln, and they come out how I need them. After the first firing, they become what is called bisque ware, which is a sort of dry, porous state to allow for glaze application. For the glaze application process, I first wipe off any dust particles that could prevent the glaze from properly sticking to the clay. I then add wax resist into the holes so that it will prevent glaze from getting inside it. The glaze material itself is suspended in water, and when I apply it to the porous bisque ware, the water gets sucked into the piece, causing the glaze material left behind to stick to the outside of the piece. After I coat them, I then wipe off the bottom of the pieces to make sure that they don't get stuck to the kiln shelves during the firing process. Then I fire them again to fully vitrify the clay and to turn the glaze coating to what it is designed to be, which is a clear glass coating, as you can see here. The white color is the color of the clay body itself with no colorants added. I liked the color as it is, and by having it white, it allowed for a better projection viewing experience. But I am not quite done. I still need to attach the wire in them to be able to hang them on the wall. This process is relatively simple. I cut small sections of wire that I simply glue into the holes. For each army man, there are two holes on the back to stabilize them on the wall. Here they are, finally, all made and ready to be installed. While I was making all the army men, I was also working on the video projection component. Here I am setting the video project up in After Effects. This project wasn't quite as long as making the army men, but I did redo it many times to try new things out and find the best way to show the content I wanted. Here are some various stills of the many versions the video went through. I am very pleased with the final version of the video. Finally came the time to install my piece, so I got all of the army men package them up, and move them to the gallery for installation. And here they all are set up in the gallery, taking two whole tables as I begin to install. 
With having so many pieces and a lot of wall space, I needed to figure out how to arrange everything to best fit the space. I also had to consider the projector and finding a good location for it. I wanted the armament to be arranged in a rigid pattern because it symbolizes the structured upbringing I had that didn't allow for many variances. I was inspired by simple wall patterns, so I played around with different patterns until I found one that felt right. Since I had a second wall to work with, I was able to make an arrangement based on the original pattern to be a companion to the piece and also create a space that the viewer can be in. Here is me installing some of the work. Each army guy is individually put on the wall. This allowed me to manipulate the pattern as needed all the way up to installation day. I used an image with the projector to mark where they all go. The whole process took about a week to do with the time I had available to install. After all that work, I finally got to hear the work now complete. I showed you the extensiveness of the process that I took in this project because it is significant. I put an insane amount of work into this project, and while I could arguably count the hours this project took, I will never be able to count the hours I take to unlearn the negative teachings of my childhood and to relearn good and healthy habits and principles. So now I have the future to look to. My immediate future involves doing an internship this summer to finish my BFA. For now, I want to take a break from the specific project and play around with some ideas I've had along the way, some of which are returning to past projects. I'll be doing a lot of sketching and planning ideas while I adjust to making art on my own away from the variety of resources I had while being a student. I do want to continue developing my video and animation skills and seeing what that has in store for me. Sometime in the future, I intend to go on to graduate school to get my MFA to gain new experiences and improve my skills. It is my hope to one day become a professor where I can teach students and help them along their journey as an artist. In closing, I am very glad to have been able to complete this project, especially during the pandemic. I could not have done it without the support of the faculty, fellow students, and especially my friends.